but there's times I won't be able to guess. Let's see a nice systematic way of doing it. The systematic approach is called algebra. And what I want to do is I want to take this 2 and I want to move it over here so I can get this question mark all by itself. So how am I going to do that? Well, the nice trick with algebra is I can do anything I want so long as I do it to both sides. So that's a positive 2. I could get rid of it by subtracting 2. But remember, I have to do it to both sides. So I subtract 2 from both sides. So now I have question mark plus 2 minus 2 equals 4 minus 2. The plus 2 and the minus 2 will cancel each other out, leaving me with question mark equals 4 minus 2. And now that's an equation I can run. The question mark's on one side, the 4 minus 2 is on the other. Question mark must equal 2. I can do the exact same thing uh, with the original equation if that was a minus sign, simply by flipping uh, each of the signs. Now I can go for multiplication. Once again, in this case, if I was doing division, I'd simply do the following steps in reverse. So I have question mark times 2 equals 4. I want to do the opposite of that 2. So that means divide by 2 instead of times by 2. So I'll divide both sides by 2, because remember I have to do it to both sides. And I get question mark times 2 divided by 2 equals 4 divided by 2. The 2's cancel each other out. They turn into 1, since it's 2 divided by 2. And I'm left with question mark equals 4 divided by 2, which I can solve for question mark equals 2. Now it's possible that instead of having the question mark divided by 2, I could have 2 divided by the question mark. This provides me with two problems. First of all, the question mark's not by itself. Second, it's on the bottom. I need the question mark on the top of my fraction bar, so I'm going to have to get it there. I have two things I need to do. I can do them in either order. I'm going to start with that question mark. I want to get the question mark on top. So what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides by question mark. That gives me this, which I then can cancel out those question marks. And I have my question mark on top, but on the other side. However, it's still not by itself. So I need to get rid of the 4. I can do that by dividing by 4. Once again, I divide 4 on both sides, giving me this. The 4's cancel, and I'm left with 2 divided by 4, which is 1 half. Now in chemistry, quite often we don't have a bunch of numbers that we're trying to solve for 1. Instead, we have a bunch of letters. Each one represents a number, presumably some I know, and one that I don't. So long as I know all but one of them, I can find out what that other one is. So in this case, I'm going to assume that I know C and I know B, but I don't know A. I need to get A by itself, so I need to get B over here. This is going to go exactly the same way as I did with the 2. I'm going to subtract B from both sides. Once again, I'm doing the opposite. Originally it was plus B, now it's minus B. I rewrite it. I have plus B minus B. Those cancel out, and I'm left with A equals C minus B. And in this case, I have A by itself, everybody over here, and if I know C and B, I can plug it in to my calculator, get an answer out, and I'm done. Same drill goes if it's multiplication or division. I start out, I've got A times B equals C. Once again, I'm going to assume my unknown is A, so I will do the opposite of the multiply B. I will divide by B on both sides. That gives me this. Once again, the B's are canceling out. And I get A equals C divided by B. As always, if my operators, that's the multiply or divide, are switched, I simply switch them throughout the uh, equations. Here's a classic uh, chemistry equation. This is the combined gas law. In this case, on the left side, I am looking at the conditions of some kind of sealed container before 
an event has occurred, and on the right side I'm looking at after. The ones and twos that are in the subscript are labeling which type, which container I'm looking at. They could easily be replaced with initial and final uh, respectively. The P stands for pressure, the V for volume, and the T for temperature. However, for our purposes, that doesn't particularly matter. All I want to do is sort out and get five of them on one side and one of them on the other. For this example, let's look at this T1. I want to get it by itself. It's going to pose a few challenges for us. For starters, you notice this is on the bottom. It means I need to get it to the top. And second of all, it's got this hanging out around it. So I need to get it to the top and by itself. There's two approaches. First, I can move it up and then by itself, or I can go by itself, then up. I'm going to start and do that in this order. So, if I want to get to the top, I'm going to have to times both sides by T1. Now, on the left, the T1s are going to cancel. Remember, T1 and T2 are not necessarily the same number, so they're not going to cancel. On the right, I have now times by T1, and I can rewrite it like this. Remember, two variables simply sitting next to each other means multiplication. Rewrite this again, get myself a little bit more white space so I can work. Now I have T1, but it's got this sitting next to it. What I want to do is I want to treat this as one entity. That's P times V divided by T. If I turn it upside down, take T2 divided by P2, V2, multiply those two together, they'll cancel. So that's what I'm going to do. You'll notice once again, this is the upside down version of that. When I multiply those two fractions together, they'll cancel into one. So I do that, all of those guys cancel. Notice they don't cancel over here because these guys are different from those. This now leads me with this. T2 times P1 V1 over P2 V2 equals T1. I have the five that I know on one side and the one that presumably I didn't know on the other. That was one approach. The other approach, two steps in reverse. So once again, I have my combined gas law, and I'm also looking again for T1. Originally, I got it on top first, then isolated it. But I can isolate it first instead. So if I want to isolate it, then that means I want to get rid of this guy. So I will divide both sides by P1V1. They cancel out on the left. It'll go under the fraction bar on the right, and I get this guy. Not quite done yet. This is isolated, but it's on the bottom. I'll rewrite it with a little more white space so I can uh, work. And I want to flip it. The mathematical approach is to take it to the negative first power. So I take both sides to the negative first power, which literally means flip them. The things on the bottom are now on top. The things on top are now on bottom. So in rearranging equations, five basic steps. First, write down the equation you're going to rearrange. You're going to need some paper to do this. Give yourself plenty of space. Figure out which are your knowns and which is your unknown. Remember, you can only have one unknown. If you try and solve for multiple unknowns, it's going to take a couple more equations to do so. You have to divide and conquer with that. Once you know which one you're solving for, Keeping in mind that you can do anything you want, as long as you do it to both sides, keep doing something until your unknown is by itself. Essentially, you're trying to do the opposite of whatever's sticking next to that unknown. Don't forget, you've got order of operations and a couple other things that might make your life a little bit more complicated. Finally, once your unknown is all by itself, you're either done, or if you have numbers to plug in, that's the time to plug them into your calculator and get out an answer. Thank you, and I hope this helps.